many miracles do you think saved you that day? How many miracles? Three, maybe. The elevator, which I should have died there. Probably, I mean, a lot of people died in the elevators. Yeah, I know the audio sucked on that last part. You've never heard of the 9-11 surfer? That's right, he rode a wave of air surfing on a piece of debris from the Twin Towers. Well, let's watch. I thought something heavy is falling through the through the stairs or part of the buildings uh, collapsing and falling through, uh, and I just dove right into the corner. I went into a fetal position. I covered my face and hands, and I buried myself as close to the wall as possible to protect myself from any anything falling through. <laughs> Thinking that was that was the only way to protect myself. Uh, if something heavy fell, it might hit the wall. Um, it was then that I felt. The, the wall that I was next to and the, the base of the floor just crack open uh, and give way and that's when I knew right there and then that that was, that was it the entire building was, was going I said to myself my god I can't believe yeah I didn't remember this guy myself but his name is Pascal Buscelli Okay, he was in the an elevator on the North Tower. Uh, the first plane hit, he said, when the elevator stopped on the 44th floor. So he was in the elevator when the plane hit. Okay, so and it's a, I guess he's going down, so it's a plane hit above him. Amazing. Elevator still worked, apparently. Um, he saw scenes of panic, but he the he's a structural en engineer, of course, that's his job, who worked for the New York Post. Port Authority continued to his 64th floor. So he's in the elevator, plane hits, he goes down, elevator stops at the 44th, but he works at the 64th, so I don't know why. It, but sometimes elevators might pass your, your floor, you know, it, it happens. So he goes past his, doors open, he sees scenes of panic, but then just goes on to the 64th floor. First paragraph, he's in the elevator when his it says the first plane hit him between the so it hit the tower he's in uh, presumably so then he, he and his colleagues begin to evacuate but okay but he has to call his wife to see what's going on and then it, uh him and his colleagues gathered in front of a television to watch the second plane hit the nearby tower why weren't y'all getting out of the building y'all were in the building that already got hit what what <laughs> He and his colleagues began to evacuate, but by the time they reached the 22nd floor, the building began to collapse. Seeing the images on the television, his wife was certain that her husband was dead. However, as the walls around him began to collapse, Mrs. Brazelli began to plummet, he said. And then they include this uh, quote that we'll see in the video coming up here. I've never jumped out of an airplane, but I think I was having this experience. Surfing while falling, just riding on air, being pushed back from all sides uh, like I was on a roller coaster. End quote. So I went skydiving for the first time in my life recently. I don't know if anyone uh, listening has been skydiving. You know how fast you're falling. It feels like you're falling. And you're falling very, very quickly. Um, he apparently had this a different experience. I mean, I don't know what this guy's even talking about. You, you would feel, it would be terrifying. That you, and you would know that you're falling. Um... You know, like if the sleeping someone's sleeping and they're falling back, you know, like the movie Inception or whatever, like it wakes you up. Like it's it's it's, it's an ex, it's an experience. It's a sensation that is um, consuming, all consuming. But anyway, that's that's my two cents about it. Let's go see these clips. Absolutely unbelievable. And really, just the tip of the iceberg of how incredibly insane and ridiculous this. Uh, this testimony is by this guy so falling, we'll see some more here we're jumping out of a plane that feeling of just riding the the air um and getting knocked around and riding you know the, that surfing kind of feeling is what I was experiencing. 
So here we're going to see him being interviewed. This audio is just from the, the video that I just played, um, introducing him on the Today Show. <laughs> now watch, like, first of all, his, his, his story, absolutely incredible, you know, whatever. <laughs> but her, uh, just watch the interviewer and her demeanor, how she, she acts like, uh, she acts like a, a dumb surfer. I mean, I'm not even kidding. Like just, just, just you'll see what I'm talking about. Watch this interviewer. She's been doing it for a long time, but like, why is she talking like that? It's very strange. And that he was was nothing short of miraculous. And they said, "We got it from here. You know, don't worry, we're gonna get you out of here." This is, you know, just, uh, at that point, I was like, "Thank God." You know? <laughs> And Pasquale Bazzelli is with us now, along with his wife, Louise, and their daughters, 10-year-old Hope and 7-year-old Mia. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. We have animation to show this harrowing ride that you had. You were on the 64th floor. You evacuated down to the 22nd and yeah. then fell essentially to the 4th floor. The name of the <laughs> documentary is, is the 9-11 Surfer. It feels like an odd word. Yes, very odd. Um, I mean, I, I've heard about the urban legends. <laughs> yes, um, yes right about, very you know, odd. Right about <laughs> my wife was like, that's you, that's you, you know, and uh, it... Yeah, so, like, what are we doing here? I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, I'm going to let this play out, but, like, what's your reality threshold? I mean, this sh looking back on this, it's so obvious, and I don't can't believe how we were so stupid and I see this, but... Um, you know, a couple official sources or whatever. I mean, it's so clearly a lie. Um, how could we be duped like this? But again, like I called it a reality threshold because there's certain things that hopefully you can look at in your, you know, that happened in history that you can say that's BS just based on what you know as a human being. Um, and so this could be your reality threshold to maybe look into other things and Try to uncover the deception that's very real that's very much going on and don't be afraid of conspiracy theories or official stories or anything um because it's just how we're wired we're wired to want to know the why and just look at the what start there and see what happened what's a lie what's real what's not they pretty much dubbed it that on on discovery and the show and because they did a study on it and they said that basically how I survived was probably in this pocket of air or this uplift of uh, wind or the way I described the fall you so I guess 9-11 surfer is yeah. you said urban legend <clears throat> which is it's yeah. true a lot some people are skeptical and you said if you had heard this story you might have been skeptical mm -hmm. as well of course uh, I'm an engineer I have a you know just believe in science and facts uh, if I mean I went through it so I know what I went through uh, and if I hadn't someone told me the story, I'd, I'd be skeptical also. <laughs> Why now? It's been 11 years. You've never come forward and told this story. Why did you decide this is the time to, to tell what happened publicly? Um, I mean, I had done certain small local things uh, because we started Song for Hope Foundation to try to raise money for uh, the mothers that uh, didn't make it at the time, uh, whose husbands didn't make it at the time who were pregnant. Um, and um, it was very difficult telling the story then. I, I, I couldn't. I was going through... Uh, post-traumatic stress and, and survivor guilt from that and uh, it took a long time to heal from that um, I just I forced myself to to do that to try to give something back um, eventually I came to you know accept uh, what had happened to me uh, I was able to go on and, and, and mourn uh, and grieve those that I've lost my friends uh, Pat Steve others that were with me that day um, so I feel now it's an important story to share uh, with others. Um, so my wife and I decided to you know, actually write a book and, and put it down and then they did this uh, on Discovery Channel. Um, so We heard you important. talk in the tape piece about the sensation of falling. Can you still remember that to this day? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every every moment of that um, free falling. I, I, the final impact, the final flash of when I landed, uh, it was that I don't know. It was either when I actually landed um, and got knocked unconscious or during the fall, I got hit with something. Uh, I got knocked unconscious, but a split second later, I opened up my eyes and, and I just felt, no, I, like I said, I, I thought I was dead. Uh, and then I started to cough, feel pain. Uh, and I said, I, I can't believe, I couldn't believe at that point. I, I looked up and there was nothing above me. The building was gone. So I, um, 
I couldn't even believe it myself at that point. And Louise, here you are at home. He had called mm -hmm. you a couple of times. You saw that tower fall and you knew he was inside. Mm -hmm. You must have thought he didn't make it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I watched the, the, the second plane hit and then I watched the second tower fall. And then I watched his building fall and uh, I was pregnant at the time with Hope. And uh, I just, I knew he didn't get out in time because we spoke on the phone just a few minutes before that. Um, and, you know, for those couple of hours that I didn't hear from him, um, I was a widow and I was carrying this baby. And there was nothing I could do. And I just watched the whole thing happen right in front of me. And, you know, it was just a, a feeling of just hopeless, um, you know, helplessness, really. It must still be so hard to see that image of the tower falling, knowing that you were inside. See what I mean? She's like, what? what was that like? What was that like? Yeah, I, I've watched it so many times after. Um, <clears throat> I actually became fi fixated on it. Um, and, and, you know, it took me a long time to, to heal from that. I, I'm, I'm better now and, and things, are, things are good. I'm happy again. Uh, and I think it's important that people realize that, you know, some people say, you know, to people out there, you hear it all the time, oh, get over it, 9-11, get over it. That's ridiculous. Um, first of all, you shouldn't be telling it someone else to get over it. Um, but basically, the bottom line is that you should celebrate each day. My friend Pat Hoey said that. Um, enjoy life and um, just remember those uh, that tried to save us and uh, didn't make it and remember those that, that we lost. And the book you've written is a part of that remembering. Yes. And I know Hope did the illustrations. That's pretty neat. Well, thank you so much for coming here and sharing your story and helping us remember thank today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Really thank you. Biggest thing. So I focus on her a lot. This month, Louise will release this song to raise money for women who lost their partners in the World Trade Center, a tragic club she joined for a short time. Her charity is called Song for Hope Foundation. Would I see you again? You know, and I only lived what they lived for one day. I don't know how they go on up until today. Sunshine. building collapse and my daughter so three yeah. have you bought a lottery ticket no <laughs> <laughs> no i think i won the biggest lottery <laughs> you did win the biggest lottery yeah, yeah. was what i was experiencing According to Pasquale, his fall ended here, at the top of what was left of Stairway B. I didn't feel anything. It was just, my body was totally numb. I mean, I felt nothing at all. I just opened up my eyes and saw a blue sky. I really thought I was dead. Fortunately for Pasquale, there were firefighters out there who were willing to brave the dangers in the hope of finding survivors. We had no idea whether he was fire or civilian or what he, wa what he was, it really, I guess, really didn't matter. But the fact that we saw an individual up there after what we had climbed through in the position that he was was nothing short of miraculous. And they said, we got it from here, you know, don't worry, we're gonna get you out of here. This is, you know, just, uh, at that point, I was like, thank God. You know? <laughs> And Pasquale Bazzelli is with us now, along with his wife, Louise, and their daughters, 10-year-old Hope and 7-year-old Mia. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. We have animation to show this harrowing ride that you had. You were on the 64th floor. You evacuated down to the 22nd and yeah. then fell essentially to the fourth floor. The name of the documentary is, is The 9-11 Surfer. It feels like an odd word. Yes, very odd. Um... I mean, I, I've heard about the urban legends. Um, I've always read, you know, read about it, and my wife was like, "That's you, that's you," you know, and uh, it.